Kilos Monument Session. So first, let me sketch you very quickly what is this going to look like. We will start with a general introduction about what is Wikilos Monuments, how did it happen the last, few, last year, how did it happen this year, and then we will move on to a specific explanation on how we, uh, Wikimedia Austria participated in Wikilos Monuments. Uh, after that, we will have a pretty long Q&A session with uh, some panelists from different countries. jean frederic from uh, Wikimedia France. We have Alex from uh, Wikimedia Austria. Martin Dammers uh, from uh, the Netherlands, and there is Strainu from over there. <laughs> Romania. <laughs> Romania, that is. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you can tweet about Wikilos Monuments all you want. Of course, we appreciate that very much. So, who, has, who knows what Wikilos Monuments is? Okay, let me rephrase. Who does not know what Wikilos Monuments is? Ah, it's still a few people, that's good. So we actually have to tell you something. And who, part, who lives in a country where there was a Wikilos Monuments last year? And who participated in that? Okay, so very few participants. Oh, we have a lot to win. That is good. So, and who organized Wikilos Monuments last year? Who was going to organize it this year? That's, ah, very nice. So, Wikilos Monuments uh, started all with a mill project. There is, like the Netherlands, it's, it's a country and we have a lot of water. Actually, the country is lower than the water, so we need some of these constructions to get the water out. So we have 1,300 of these windmills all throughout the country. And um, some Wikipedians started to write articles about it, and they started to make photos of it. And they started to, to create a list of all the windmills and get an article and a photo of every single one of them. And at some point, they succeeded in that, somewhere in 2010. So they needed something else. In 2009, they already organized Wikilove's Art. Wikilove's Art, a photo competition in museums, more than 40 museums participating. And that was pretty successful. Um, so we try to combine uh, the best of two worlds. Monuments, which is not something like, uh, like this, uh, not just statues of people, but actually something like this, buildings uh, which are uh, important. So we started this in 2010. Uh, we asked people in one month to take photos of the 60,000 monuments we have in the Netherlands, so mostly old buildings. And uh, with the project, uh, we had great results. We had a lot of participants. We had really good feedback. And uh, it worked really well, the, the project. It had, uh, the project has several goals. We want to get freely licensed photos. Uh, most buildings have a photo. You can find it on Google Street View, or some uh, archive has it. But it's not freely licensed, so we can't use it on Wikipedia. We want to get people more familiar with commons. Most people know Wikipedia, but never heard of commons. So this was a good way to introduce them to the commons and uh, help them get to know it. It was also a good way to facilitate the heritage projects. Like in the Netherlands, we had a heritage project with, which made all these lists, and they didn't have a lot of photos. So with this competition, we were able to give that project a boost and really make it a, a successful project and have it grow. And it's also a good way to connect offline and the online world. Like we're here at Wikimania, you, you meet a lot of people in person. That's really nice. With Wikilove's Monuments, we had several events where people went on the photo uh, safari together. You introduce yourself, you meet people, and like the person who looks really scary online turned out to be not that scary. Um, Wikipedia is edible, uh, editable, uh, not edible. Uh, <laughs> That would be nice, but, uh, and a lot of people don't know that. And uh, in this kind of competitions, people show, uh, see that if they participate, they can actually change it and help out and make it better. And it's just a way to getting uh, people in. It's a good way to do capac capacity and community building. Uh, you have a goal uh, together, you want to achieve something, and uh, you have a goal to work to. Like, 
if you want to create a chapter, you don't want to create a chapter just because you like to create it. No, you want to do that to get something done, to see something happen. With weak loss monuments, you have, some, uh, have, have a goal. We want to make it a successful competition in September, and that's what we are aiming at. Uh, Wiki Lost Monuments turned out to be a really good way to access the cultural heritage world. Uh, you have all these uh, institutes in charge of uh, old buildings, and uh, now we have a project we can go to them and say, hey, I'm Martin, I'm from uh, Wikimedia, and we, we're doing this awesome project. Do you want to help out with us, uh, work with us? And that was a really good way of getting to know these institutions and building long-term relations with them. And uh, finally, for us, especially for the second year we did it, it was a good way to do international co uh, cooperation. Uh, all the chapters are organizing Wikilas monuments in their country, but they were all working together to achieve the same goal. Uh, Wikilas monuments has five pillars, the philosophy b behind the project. It should be really, really easy. So everything that makes it more difficult, we don't want it. We want to make it really dumped down so that everyone who is new to Wikipedia, new to Commons, can participate. And uh, that means less is more. So for example, you know, you know the scary upload forms we had on Commons a couple of years ago? We don't want it. We used to upload wizard, uh, even dumped down. It should be fun to do. Nobody participates in a project if it's not fun. Uh, People uh, you know taking photographs and going out in the sun can be lots of fun. So it's a good motivator to get people in. It should be local. You don't want to, uh, the barrier, uh, just like with easy and fun, the barrier should be low. And if it's local, you can just go out. Maybe when you go to work, take some photos, or it's a nice Sunday afternoon and you're wondering, what am I going to do? You can go out and take photos. So it should be near to your home. And to help Wikipedia, you know, every year with the banners, people like Wikipedia. People want to help Wikipedia, and this is a way to do that. People need to get uh, a sense of uh, why are they doing it. And one of the things is quick and visible results. So you took a photo, you upload them to to comments, and the next day you see it on Wikipedia. That's pretty cool, right? You uh, did all this effort, and suddenly your photo is on Wikipedia. So to accomplish this, we try to create a, an easy set of rules, and that is basically what defines the contest. It's a one-month contest where everyone can participate as long as you fit into these rules. Although every, in the end, it's a federative contest. That means that every country will define their specific set of rules. But this is the basis for it. Pictures, of course, have to be self-taken and self-uploaded. If your grandfather has some wonderful pictures, please let him upload it. Unfortunately, we cannot accommodate every single exception because that would make the upload procedure much more complicated and we would get rid of that easy part. Um, the upload is only available in September. We don't care when you made the pictures. So if you have a photo of the Eiffel Tower with a lot of snow under it, we know it was not really from September probably, but <laughs> which is uh, more or less still summer. So. We're okay with that. We don't care. We're not going to check when you made the picture. We just assume that it may have snowed in September. Um, we just want you to upload it in September. The default license is only CC by SA 3.0. We know that there are Wikipedians who would love to upload their pictures under GPL uh, 2.5 with uh, some specific exceptions. If you want to do that, use your own upload methods. But the default license is always the same. We are not going to offer a whole range of different licenses. Um, because newcomers simply will not understand all the minor differences between those licenses. It's already hard enough to explain what they are committing to. Pictures have to be identified by a locally determined identifier. We need to know what is on the picture. It's very nice that you photographed a building in the middle of Amsterdam. But if you've been there, it might, you might know that it's sometimes hard to, get, to uh, keep them apart. So we want to know which building it is, and that's why you have to identify it. And uh, participants need to have their email enabled, because otherwise, unfortunately, we're not able to tell you that you want something. So in 2011, we had 18 countries participating in Europe. 
Ah, the phone, yes. So we had 18 per, uh, participating countries in 14 different languages. Hundreds of Wikipedians helped out organizing this. It was a big effort. Some of them online helping creating to the lists. Some of them or, uh, giving a guided tour through the city. Uh, other people just helping to upload pictures uh, with people who, did, who weren't able to do that at home. And that resulted in more than 5,000 participants all over Europe. 4,000 of these participants never uploaded anything before. We'll see that later uh, in more detail. And that was all uh, accomplished within one month. Uh, I think uh, the dates are not exactly the same in every country, but this was more or less um, the, month, uh, the month we were talking about. And together that resulted in 168,208 photos. Yes, we counted them all. Um, <clears throat> and that is way more than the old um, uh, Guinness Book of World Records record for the largest photography competition in the world. These were the countries that were uh, participating last year and next year. And this was, uh, in the end, the winning photo. I'm not sure if uh, Mihai is somewhere in the room. Can you please stand up? That's our winner. So he won a trip to this Wikimania with flight and everything. And are you enjoying yourself? Yeah. OK, wonderful. So this is the kind of pictures we can get if we, uh, if we have a nice competition. And we, have a, we had 168,207 more. This is a monastery in Romania. Uh, it's our derelict. It's falling apart. I think it's near the airport. And uh, it's uh, really desolate because I think it's cleared because there have the planes coming over it. So if, if we did some statistics uh, lately, and uh, Erik Sachte, uh, who is also at this conference, he is our, um, he is our statistics wizard uh, at Wikime uh, Wikimedia, and he created some uh, he very helpful statistics to understand what these participants are coming from, what they have been doing, and what they have been doing afterwards. So if we just look at when was their first edit, this is the picture you get. And you see there are actually some Wikipedians from 2001 who have been con uh, participating in the contest. That is wonderful. But what is exciting me most is that almost two-thirds of these participants made their first edit in September 2011. They never touched Wikipedia or the Wikimedia projects before, as far as we know. And that actually translates in some very nice uh, graphs. These are the graphs of the new editors per month, um, every time. And as you can see, this red line here, that is Wikimedia Commons. And that big bump in there, that is September 2011. So for the colors, the blue one is the English Wikipedia. The yellow one uh, is the German Wikipedia. So we actually crossed the Germans uh, in September. And uh, <laughs> now Commons is the second biggest project here on uh, the Wikimedia uh, universe, uh, also with the total number of uh, active editors. So in 2012, uh, we're organizing Week Lost Monuments again. It's again going to be in September, but last year was only in Europe. This year we're going worldwide. Uh, we have over 25 countries who are interested in joining in. Some are, are really far and some are a bit struggling to get it going. Uh, they're uh, spread all around the world, mostly in, in Europe, because a lot of countries who participated last year are joining in again. And let's see how far we can get. We uh, we had 5,000 participants last year. We might 10,000. Uh, we don't know. We uh, it's up to the countries who are organizing it to uh, get even higher numbers. The same with the photos. We're aiming at the sky, and we'll see where we get. We we really need all the people who raise their hands that they're organizing this year to uh, to help us with it to really make this a success. This is the, the current map of uh, participating countries. Uh, the dark reds are the countries who are saying they're definitely going to join in. The lighter ones are the ones that might be joining in, not sure yet. And whites are who are not joining in yet. So you'll see uh, here in the US and Europe and India. And so it's, uh, it's quite a number of uh, countries. So get a lot of questions on the main list, how all the systems work, how do we make all the tools. 
and uh, Elke Wetzig uh, made an infographic. I'll link it in later. But how this works? So we get all these uh, lists of monuments from national institutions. For example, uh, the Rijksdienst for Cultural Erfgoed in the Netherlands and in Austria they have a, s a similar service. I think you guys will go into that. And we use that data to make lists on Wikipedia. Uh, lists like that. Uh, y you might have seen them on your local Wikipedia. It contains usually the name, uh, uh, w where it is, coordinates, and maybe even uh, already a photo. And a unique identifier to know what monuments is what. And we did a kind of little trick. It's instead of making it a wiki table, we're using templates. So you might recognize the scary syntax here. For the people who are uh, um, Wikipedians who know that these are templates, for the people who are not that savvy, it's like the stuff you don't edit because it's scary. But in this case, it's just a name and something you add. And because of that, we're able to uh, have a, a, a have a really clear tables, and it's possible to to harvest them later. But first, let's go to the upload wizard. Um, for the people who've been around for a while, know that uploading to Commons was really, really difficult. So the Wikimedia Foundation started a project called the Upload Wizard to make it easier. Last year, we worked together with the foundation to uh, improve the Upload Wizard to be able to support campaigns. Campaigns is uh, an upload wizard specifically for a certain project where you can remove things and pre-fill things. So for example, you don't get the license options, you don't get the intro, you just say, welcome to uh, the upload wizard, do you want to upload the photo? Okay. This is the one for the Netherlands, and of course the competition is open, uh, over right now, so I couldn't include the screenshot of the current one. So in uh, August we'll uh, deploy them again for all the, the, all the countries. And this year we have a new thing with the upload wizards. Uh, last year you had to fill out the fields yourself, but this year we'll have uh, buttons on the, in the lists, like here. You can click them if you want to upload a photo of this particular monument. So for example, if you have uh, taken a photo at the carriage house, this is near my, uh, my home, so if you are at my place, you know, I'll send you out to take a photo there. So you can just click it and all everything will be filled out. So you only have to press, press continue, select your photo, upload, and you're done. We're going to de deploy that for... <laughs> uh, we want to deploy that for all languages who participate in Wikilos Monuments to really make it easy for people to participate. And uh, let's see how many photos we get then. Uh, and how do we find that? everything. How do we find their lists? Um, we have the robot, Erfgoedbot or Erfman, like uh, Elke likes to call him. Too much information, I know. It's, uh, this is part of the infographic Elke make to explain this. If you uh, look at your local Wikipedia page, at uh, user Erfgoedbot, uh, it's localized in about 10 different languages, so if you open it, you're all with your laptop, so you can open it later. Uh, you'll see uh, uh, this explanation in your own local language, how it works. It just takes all the, uh, the templates I've shown before, puts it in a huge database, and then we can all do all the cool things, like, for example, uh, make a mobile app. But this is the numbers we have right now. So we have over uh, 707,000 items in there, spread over about 17 different languages from 41 different sources, so it's getting pretty big. And uh, over half a million have coordinates, so you know where to find them. And we're 23% have a photo, so we still have a long way to go to make this all complete. And to help with that, uh, to get the images to the list, we uh, have compiled uh, galleries every night of images that can be added, and a lot of volunteers right now working on adding them to the list. And we have fancy tools. We have maps, and Alex will probably uh, show some of them too. Uh, you can search them, and uh, this year we're going to have a mobile application. If you are uh, in the other room, there's a mobile talk, but I'm not sure if they can show this. 
This year, um, the, we're going to have a mobile app for weak loss monuments. So you can use your Android phone to, uh, to locate buildings, take photos, and upload them right away. The first beta is going to be released either this weekend or after this weekend. We're working in cooperation with the Wikimedia mobile team to get this going, and it seems to be going really well. So uh, in September, who has an Android phone here, by the way? Let's see. So at least you guys can, can test it. Uh, we, I would love to have it for the iPhone too, but it might be a, a, a too tight for the, for the production cycle to get it going. But that would make it really easy uh, to get uh, photos. The Android phones can have really great lenses already. So uh, if you would have done this two, three years ago, you might have gotten lots of crappy photos. But now, uh, if you have a normal uh, digital camera, and you compare it with the phones, you're like, oh, I'll just throw away the camera, and I'll use my phone. So it does say any questions, but the real questions can be asked at the Q&A session we have after the Austrian talk. OK. Here comes the real problem. Uh, OK. Uh, after the, pre the, the general presentation, uh, and I will try, uh, together with my colleague Alex, um, to give you a more detailed view of a participating country. So um, I will talk more about the history, about our project, uh, about our problems, and Alex then will show you some technical solutions we found during the process. So how it all began. Um, it was, um, Wikilove Monument was not our target when we founded the project because it uh, happened in uh, late 2009 that one user had the idea to integrate all monuments into the German-speaking Wikipedia. And so we had, um, he founded the project Dehio. It's named after a famous art guide which is published in Austria and Germany. And he organized a meeting uh, where 10 Wikipedians I uh, discussed about uh, all such things, so categories, intellectual proper rights, designation, a lot of meta stuff. But the, res uh, the results of the first meeting was a lot of motivated people, uh, a continuing discussion, but no tangible results, no coordinated approach, and only some test list. So, what I will show you in this presentation is that maybe organizing is uh, the wrong first step, um, but we will come to this later. So the first list looked like this. So there was uh, very different layouts, uh, different columns, uh, protected and non-protected monuments mixed, so there was no clear way how to deal with that. And there was a long, long time where nothing happened. So in turn of 2010 and 11, one user of the Austrian uh, community started to work on protected monuments. So he took the uh, published list from our um, federal monument department and created a list for the city of Linz. It's, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a small for, uh, for for the USA, it's a very small <laughs> town, but in Austria, it's the third, uh, third biggest city. So um, then I started to work on lists for Eastern Tyrol. And in February 2011, an IP, maybe it was Martin, I don't know whether <laughs> it was Ludwig, uh, IP asked us if we want to participate in Wikilove Monument 2011. And so I never heard about that. And I th thought, yeah, a great idea. So we already started with some lists. You heard? <laughs> OK. And I tried to organize a new project. So I, I asked different users which uh, participated in the first discussion or f from whom I know that they uh, like to contribute about local uh, things, uh, buildings, or they're working on articles about towns. and. We used the, uh, the Austrian monument list, so the published list from the Austrian monument office, to create this list. So 
we came from a mixture of protected and unprotected uh, monuments to only protected uh, um, monuments. And this was our project start. So you see only a rough list with uh, names of uh, federal states of Austria and districts where different users said, okay, I will care about this and I will care about this. And no. So, and this was our project progress, then from February to June. So more and more uh, users were involved. And uh, what I want to point out is that, that such lists are very motivating. So everybody who is contribute, contributing sees this list and, oh, this is green and I want to, th th this district is also green and so, and we have a lot of this map, so you will say later no, on, and it's, uh, people want to see pictures and people want to see progress and that's is a good mixture. So, problems that we had was, were, we had different layouts. So we had no rule that said uh, you have to make the list like this. We only had some examples for new users who, who were contributing which said okay maybe you will make it like this. So different layouts, I think about 20 different layouts we had. So we had a different extent of information. So some, some people put all of the information from the official lists in their lists, others did not. And there were, some had the property parcel numbers in there or they were uh, organized by catastrophic communities. And uh, a big problem for us wa was that uh, we were not able to automatically update the lists because our federal uh, monument office published every year updated lists on how to deal this with different layouts, with uh, non-template non -template lists. And so we had much to do and our solutions were to, so we find an agreement about the extent of information afterwards, agreement about the layout, and we try to rearrange all lists by bot. So because nobody wants to do it or can do this. And uh, we find a cooperation with our Austrian Monument Office. Yeah, this was a really great cooperation with the Bundesdenkmalamt, it's called in Austria. Um, so we provided for them a list and reported mistakes uh, from their published list. There were a lot of mistakes, double entries of, of monuments, wrong locations, and they provided us contact persons for questions. So we had the possibility to ask if we didn't if we didn't found a, a monument and we could ask them hey, what about that, is the, has the monument moved it's, uh, or something like this. So, and the most important thing what they provided was the primary keys for the monuments because they haven't uh, published them until that and they gave us a rough Excel list and Alex then <laughs> had a lot of work. Um, they also provided prices for our Wikilove Monument Contest in Austria and we had the possibility to use their rooms for our award presentation. Yeah. Uh, the Wikilove Monument uh, Contest in Austria was uh, organized by Wikimedia Austria in cooperation with our Austrian Monument Office. We had about 12,000 images we had uh, 346 contributors who uploaded photos and we had uh, uh, from the 346 contributors were 66% new users. So and here again a little nice map where you see uh, this is now the current uh, status so you can see um, the dark green uh, areas at the municipalities where every, photo, uh, every monument has a photo and there are regions in Austria um, where no photos are from, so this is also, I like this. So for our project we received uh, 
one week ago or two weeks ago the Zedler Preis from the from Wikimedia uh, Wikimedia Germany as Community Project uh, 2011, I think, not 12, <laughs> fault, <laughs> but it's okay. So this was also a great honor for us, and um, yeah. So the conclusion from the project is for me: start working. Don't discuss too long about how to make this list, what, which layout or something like this. Uh, this might be very easier in a later step and these discussions do not motivate people. So the work motivates the people. Uh, use bots for unification, updating and evaluation. Use templates, don't uh, have this uh, normal lists which, which are not updatable. Uh, a cooperation with a local monument office has a very high priority. I know it's often very difficult to come in these institutions, but y maybe you need the primary keys or something like this, and this will re really, really help you. And the last conclusion, provide an easy way, we already had this, provide an easy way to uh, for new users to upload pictures. So as we tried, for example, we put last year uh, an upload button within the list so that every person who is interested in the local town or so sees that he can contribute. Yeah, and now Alex will uh, tell you more about the technical issues. Hi. <laughs> okay. It, um might be boring for some of you at so, some point, but um, if you have some questions, please ask after the, that, yeah? Okay. Um, first thing I want to talk about is the, f the, the first uh, list we created, Michael uh, told you about it, um, in early 2011, and yeah, that we already talked about it. There are very, very many different list types, so yeah. That's not all. Yeah, <laughs> um, we we had to, to to change them to templates. Yeah, um, first step was to to sort the list by by type. Every user, nearly every user, used his uh, own list type. Second step was to change it by bot. It it was really really tough, but it worked. Yeah and much manual rework. We, we were three users and we t it took it about two weeks, all, all evenings. So please, start with templates. Don't do any, any manual lists and it's hard work. Our list templates are some special, special things in, in that. Yeah, that's the, the, the source code and, and the, how it looks in, in Wiki. Um, our special things we, we had last year is one, one link to comments. Um, we, sometimes there's not just one picture of, of one monument, so you can click on the comments button and, and you got to the comments category. And um, last year we had an upload button, but not with the upload wizard. Um, but this year we, we will use uh, upload wizard. Um, we had a, a, a own column with metadata, it's only visible for users um, logged in and w with an activated gadget. They offered some things like the last update of the list and something that a, a normal reader is, is not interested in. And um, we decided to, to enter name and article at two fields. It's much easier to... to um, to display it, yeah. Um, the up upload button was was um, a very big deal for, for many people to upload it. For, um, probably new people are, use it very much. Um, it, it's just a, a pre-filled link to uh, to a comments upload button box with a pre-filled field like name, ID, date, coordinates if, if they're available, um, categories. But there's a, a big problem. That's the source code of, of that one little link. 
So um, the wiki parser had problems with large lists, about um, 100 um, monuments in one list is, is the, the, the border. And that's the link created. So some older browsers may have problems with that. So this year, we use Upload Visit. <laughs> yep. That's the status pages and, and maps Michael talked about. Um, we have um, status maps by district and by, uh, by town for pictures, for coordinates, and for um, some other points. And we have the same as list. It's uh, yeah, more readable for, for people. And it's daily updated, even the, the, the maps. Um, and you have for every list the same thing. You have the, the number of objects, the number of pictures, coordinates, descriptions, and something like that. It's, it's very motivating for people. Um, when they see in, in the list, oh, there's only um, 10, 10 descriptions, and, and then the, the list is green, they, they'll do it. And the status maps is, um, yeah, it, it's um, ESUG uh, with uh, CSS color definition, so the bot can, can update it daily. It's quite simple. Uh, we made some tools, server tools too. The, the first is just to view monuments and several service and error lists. Yeah. The, that's kind of the same than on wiki. And you also have a, a, a map view. Um, every dot is a monument or a picture. Um, and different errors to, 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 to work on. And we have for, for every object uh, a single object view uh, with um, merged information from different sources. So we have every picture marked in comments, um, links to wiki list, article, comments, and something like that. We have um, all coordinates for, for the monument itself and every picture where it is taken. So that's a, 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 a not a good, um, no, no, okay. <laughs> yeah, and, and, the, and the picture database is, is Harvard's daily. Yeah, uh, on the picture database, there are some yeah <laughs> file names, ID coordinates, and so on. And so on. At at the moment, that own database is only for Austria, but yeah, it should be international in the last in, in the next time. And now that that the uh, the thing we are talking about the last two months, the annual update. Um, we got uh, a new list every year with new monuments, old monuments are, um, uh, are going away. Some monuments are split or merged to, to, to one or single monument. And in, in many monuments, details have changed. So how to work with it? The first step was we got um, two different Excel lists. One with uh, the official list with um, without IDs, but with um, many changes in, in address and name and something like that, who the, the, the monument office made by hand. The second list, the IDs, but the, the changes are not in the lists. So we had to match that list and yeah, check every single field. Yeah, a little bit of work. And as that was done, we, we added the, the new monuments, about, I think, 500 new monuments it was, yeah, by Bart. And the old monuments, who are not listed th that year, um, are moved. We, we keep them in, 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 in wiki lists, but in their own section. And we used um, the same tem template, but it, it's just a uh, redirect to the to original de de uh, template. And that's the really hard point, differences between the old lists and the new lists. Uh, we had about 7,000 differences, but most of them are not errors, um, it, such as um, 
Yeah. We had a we, we have a address and uh, official list don't have an address. Um, yeah, we're still working on this. <laughs> it's uh, five weeks now, and and I think now now we are at, at three thousand differences. Yeah, that's it. So next up is the Q&A for Wiki Lost Monuments. Uh, you can uh, just raise your hands for questions or put them on Twitter and uh, some of the other people will take care of them. Uh, who's walking with the microphone in the room? So I can give this one to him. We no, don't have a walker. Hi. I'm Eduardo from Chile. Uh, I'm very interested in the upload wizard feature. I'm here. I mean, I think you're, oh, oh sorry. Um, I was wondering, because we have a different language, if the upload wizard is already translated or it has to be provided translation to be able to function in every different language. I mean, or have you thought of that or whatever you can say about it? The base of the upload wizard is available in multiple languages. I think probably like 40, 50, 60. Sorry, the, uh, the, the one you said that's like campaign upload wizard yeah, simplified. And the, and the campaigns are uh, uh, based on simple templates and they will be localized in, uh, in August by all of us. So we aim to have uh, each campaign in the local language of the country or multiple, say for example Switzerland, you want to have it in at least uh, French, German, Italian and have every campaign in English so people who are not from the country can also participate. That's, uh, it's all using the same framework so it's not really a lot of work, you just have to find a speaker who understands the language. Maybe it's good if, uh, if I just ask everyone to introduce themselves. Uh, Definitely. Can, can you just say who you are, where you're from, and what your expertise is? Sure. Uh, jean Frédéric from France, and the chapter Wikimedia France. I was, let's say, the uh, point of contact for France in the last Wikidas Monuments contest, and I'm, apparently I'm doing it again this year, and that's it. And I'm also Wikimedia Commons sys uh, system um, administrator, so I also do a bit of templates and upload wizard things. I'm Alex from Austria. <laughs> Michael from Austria. <laughs> Andre from Romania. I'm the technical half of the team. <laughs> and uh, my name is Martin, you already see me. Okay. Thank you. Um, I would uh, like to give... Uh, yeah, hi. Um, Vince from the Hungarian Wikipedia. And my question is actually, how do you cope with factual errors in pictures? I mean, when someone mistakes a monument for another one and uploads it under the name of uh, X. However, the picture uh, is about Y. Because um, I myself as well, that's <laughs> such an error when two monuments were standing next to each other. Okay, so I'll try to respond to that. Uh, there are two types of error, let's say, the ones you see and the ones you'll receive angry emails about. <laughs> So in in every in any case, you, the easiest way is to just change the ID of the picture. Uh, we're using um, templates on Commons uh, that are populated automatically by by the upload wizard. So you just change the ID of the picture if. Um, yes, yes, uh, unless you. Yeah, basically, yeah. I don't know if anybody did something else. It's just like normal upload to comments. Uh, there will always be errors in descriptions because people make mistakes. But if we, if someone notices it, we'll just change it. And if we don't notice it, so be it. The question is, uh, if we have something like the, the picture search of Google, and we don't really have something like that. 
By the way, please use the microphone because this is being taped and otherwise the people who are watching it can't hear the questions. So you mentioned in uh, the one of the slides that uh, only 23% of the monuments in the database have photographs associated with them. Uh, do you have any idea of how that 23% is distributed across countries that participated last year and whether it will be more difficult to keep participation local this year if, if all of the, the ones that are close to big cities were, were done last year? Yeah. I only can speak for Austria. So we have uh, about two-thirds of the monuments have a photo at the moment. So uh, ma uh, mainly um, in the countryside there is still a lot of pictures missing, but the big cities are all photographed. So we got, uh, we got a question on beforehand, uh, which was how to deal with sponsors. Is there someone who would like to reply to that? What is a good way to find some local sponsors? So uh, with sponsoring, it's, uh, it really depends on what country you're in and what the habits are of your country. Uh, like, for example, in the Netherlands, it was pretty easy to uh, get small sponsorships of, uh, for example, Photoshop, who sponsored uh, some uh, a camera, or um, uh, some, uh, we got some books. And um, it's basically, you, you don't want to ask for money. It's if you want to be sponsored, ask them for some goods. Like if someone sells someone, uh, ask them to, can I get a couple of those for free as sponsorship so we can give it out as prizes? If you ask them, can I have 500 euros or $500 here? Uh, you'll probably they look like, oh, you just want to have money. But if you ask for uh, some goods, they're all s selling anyway, and it's also for them a good promotion. It's usually easier. Maybe uh, some of the others can respond to that too. Yeah, our uh, our Austrian Monument Office sponsored a lot of books about monuments, and uh, so this was also a great uh, parcel for many users because they could work uh, for Wikipedia with these books. Yeah, and get a lot of small sponsor prizes, yeah. like books for 50 uh, euro. Most companies won't even notice that they just give them away and. If you have, th then you can have like 10 or 15 different prizes. They're maybe not that big, but it's, it's uh, people appreciate that uh, to just get a prize. My name is John Dove. <coughs> I'm from Boston in the US. And I have two questions. Let me ask the first one and then the second. The first question is, it seems to me from your presentation that you're talking about all these things from a top-down sense of nationally identified monuments so I did the impression that perhaps you were also considering the sort of monuments of, you know, George Washington slept here, and here's a statue of Paul Revere, and here's this place where he was almost arrested by British officers. Uh, do you mean to include also monuments in this latter sense? Uh, only if they're uh, officially listed as, for example, listed buildings. Here in the U.S., you have the National Register of Historic Places, and it's mostly old buildings, but also contains several statues. All right, so I, I think uh, I'd like just offer the suggestion that at some point there may be a, wic a wonderful wiki project, which would even be more local and more interesting, which is actually people going out and finding the statues and inscriptions of actually really local small monuments that not, not, not necessarily nationally identified. But then let me ask my second question, which is, do you have any sort of uh, standards of what constitutes good documentation of a monument? In other words, do you want to include, I understand you want to make it really easy, so some people should just be able to take, the, take a picture of the R Romanian monastery and that's enough. But wouldn't you also want to say, gee, if you really want to document this monument well, then you should have the front view and the back view and any inscriptions and other things that might be really good information about somebody who's now trying to trace this as a, because of its identification with other trends or other aspects. So actually, regarding your first question, uh, there is another project uh, in Europe that will has recently begun. I don't know, it's sponsored by Wikimedia Sweden, if I'm not uh, wrong, which is called Wikilove's Public Art, and which does more or less what, what you were talking about. Uh, so perhaps you'll want, you want to look into that. I don't know many details, so... Uh, 
perhaps uh, Martin knows? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so... Well, I'd make a distinction between art and monuments because, you know, the, the little plaque that says George Washington slept here is not really art. It's, yeah, uh, of course. Uh, and regarding your second question, actually, there is a difference, uh, different opinion between us, for instance, and uh, Martin <laughs> and Ludwig. Um, so each of, each of us has, a, each country has a different view on that. Um, we in Romania would love to have many pictures of the same monuments. So uh, there are users who are exaggerating. We've had 250 pictures of a single monument which is too much. <laughs> but of course, yeah, it's good to have a few pictures, if possible, of, uh, of the same monument. I'm not sure if that answers your question. OK, um, another qu uh, prepared question, which we got a lot, actually, is how about this jury? Can you, Jean-Frédéric, uh, explain to us what did the jury look like in France, and, and what kind of people uh, did you invite to, uh, to uh, look after these pictures? I can do that. Uh, in France, if I remember correctly, we had, well, the basic idea was to mix Wikimedians, uh, experts in monuments, and experts in photographs. Uh, that was the basic idea. We didn't succeed with everyone. So we had uh, three Wikimedians, uh, w one of which is uh, um, an amateur photograph. Uh, one of our glam people, which, which was Wikipedian in residence at the Palace of Versailles, and maybe in this room, actually, or in some other room. So you just grab him if you want. Um, we had the president of Wikimedia France, who is an uh, expert in art, uh, because he's a curator in the, at the National Library of France. And we had uh, a, true, a professional photographer who was also a free software activist. And finally, we had our VIP, which, which was uh, Yann Arthus Bertrand. I don't know if you heard about him. He's the guy who is uh, photographing the earth from the sky. And he was part of our jury. And that's it. And um, maybe, uh, maybe Strainu can explain, like, what, what are the criteria that you used um, to judge like, what is the best photo? What, what kind of things did you, uh, did you look into? Uh, well, I was not really involved in, uh, <laughs> in the um, evaluation process, but if I remember correctly, there were points given for artistic quality, for the um, how often is that monument already covered in Wikipedia, or how many pictures did we receive of that monument. And um, it was, uh, and also there were uh, there were some points left to the um, to the jury. So a part of the of the points were just free, free to the jury to to choose. And were that the same uh, criteria used in Austria? Um, yeah, we had a pre-selection, so a lot of Wikipedians um, searched all the photos and and selected some of them for the main ch uh, judges. Um, I was not in the, in the process then of the selection of the winners, but um, I think the main criteria were um, I don't know, as a no technical issues like uh, pixels or something like this, or more um, the arrangement of the photo, um, the use, uh, the possible usage in Wikipedia's, and such things. Thanks. Um. Okay, so my, my question regards to f of all this story about making list of f monuments, which is the really big pain in the ass, in fact, in, in most projects. So uh, we are still stick to these wiki, terrible wiki tables all over the time. And when, when I heard this Austrian story about wiki tables, it was almost the same story in, in, in case of Polish project as well. And just very recently, of uh, our kind of friendly competitors from another NGO in Poland created a really funny web page, <coughs> uh, just making a list of monuments in uh, in, in open way. Just anyone can 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 help with this project. And then there is really very very simple, not based. It's just the database. And uh, it's very, very easy. If there is maybe a little bit of time, I can show you briefly how does it look like. And maybe next this year, probably not. But maybe on next year, we could think about doing something like this instead of this 
these really terrible tables. Uh, I don't know, I can show you very briefly what, what people can do, and this is made a little bit in a wiki style, but people don't need to cope with wiki tables, they are just asked to provide some information using also putting, for example, a point of the map, uh, then if, uh, if, uh, if making a little bit better address if it's not correct completely, and then there is a sy system when one person put this information, so two others must approve that this is okay, and then it's added to the uh, to the list. And actually, they just opened this system two weeks ago. In Poland, there are 7,000 something f f f heritage points, and uh, in two weeks, they managed to f improve uh, 5,000 of mo monuments, and they have a hope to have a complete well-made list uh, until September. I think it would defeat the purpose. And it's, me it's made in a completely different way than we do this, and I think it's much more smarter than, than we do this. <laughs> uh, one, if you saw the, the five points, and one of the points is to help Wikipedia. If we're doing it on an external site, we're not helping Wikipedia. It's, uh, we're, uh, it's not a separate project. We're doing this to in improve our uh, encyclopedias. If we would move it somewhere else, that would defeat the purpose of the whole project. Maybe Wikidata can help for this next year, but uh, this 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 method of of, of m making list of uh, uh, monuments using wiki tables is really the the worst idea one can manage to to make a, a, a database. Right? This is not a database. This is w Wikipedia, and generally, wiki software is not for making database. And what we are doing with list of we are making quite large, extensive uh, f table of uh, the, the, the f f database. And then it's almost sure that it should be for future use the, and any normal database management system, not, 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 not wiki. <coughs> I think that um, the, the, the tables is indeed something that has been discussed several times and that can always be improved. So I hope you will share that link, uh, Tomasz, on, yeah. the, on the mailing list. Okay. Or put Did it on that? Twitter. But you mentioned Wikidata, and we're already in contact with people working on that project. Uh, some of you might have uh, gone to their presentation too. And Wikidata would, of course, be the next step to store all the information in, because this is just a temporary stage. If Wikidata really uh, works, then it means we can just store all the information in there and we don't have to make lists anymore. We just have, we can create articles or whatever we want. We're much more, more flexible. But Wikidata isn't there yet. Wikidata is in full development. So maybe next year, we'll see. All right, uh, I'm Roel from Wikimedia Philippines. Yes, and practically after seeing how the interface will be when uh, uploading pictures, uh, we thought that it will be a problem for us in the Philippines because after gathering the official list of monuments in the country, well, we were notified by our cultural agency that uh, because of a new law that was passed by Congress, any structure that is over 50 years old is a monument unless declared otherwise. <laughs> so <laughs> now uh, seeing the interface, I, I, I don't think uh, it will be, uh, there will be sufficient time for us to uh, really identify all these structures just in time for the September contest. We'd love to have that law in Romania. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, was, was, is there any workaround that we could actually uh, exploit so that at least we don't have to really have a definitive list? Yeah. We could probably uh, work around like uh, asking people their address or something like that. Uh, we have more countries where we're struggling with this problem of not really clear definition. And uh, uh, like 80% of the countries can work like that, maybe not, maybe 90%, but maybe one of the others uh, want to respond to that. Hi guys, I'm Dumisani from South Africa, and we also 
participating in this year's Wiki Loves Monument. I've got a couple of questions for, for you guys. Uh, the first one is one we've, we've, we encountered when we started um, thinking about the competition and going through the research that we needed to do for the competition. And that is the definition of a monument. Uh, European definition is very different to South African definition mm -hmm. of a monument. We, we define a landmark, a building, or a statue uh, to be a monument. So we are necessarily, we're not necessarily going to be getting only buildings in here. We'll be getting other items as well. Is there a problem from the competition organizers on, on that definition? I think I can answer that. In France, the same. Uh, actually, what a monument, there is a clear definition between, they make, in France, they make a difference between uh, buildings and other stuff. And the contests were very focused on buildings because it, I guess it's more, uh, you can see it from uh, uh, farther. So that's what, because maybe that's what, why people just take monuments, but we look so at ships or uh, ring bells or just you know everything that's usually stored inside churches and everything. I don't think it's really an issue. Worst thing you can get is get too much pictures, but <laughs> not really. Okay, I did say I had three questions. Um, my second one is, uh, you mentioned that your jury in France uh, was constituted of Wikimedians, uh, photographers, and other experts. Their participation in the jury, was that on a volunteer basis, or was it on a? Yes, they were. OK. Then my, my last question, and this is the question we're getting when we meet with um, um, government officials and so on. What is the ultimate um, aim of the competition. So we collect all these 200 or 2,000 pictures of the monuments and so on. And we put them up on commons and so on. What is the end um, goal for, for the competition? We've given them our answers, but I'd like to see if that's the same thing you guys have. I guess it's all, ab all about the sum of all human knowledge or something I heard about. Um, I, th I think that everyone has different goals. So maybe it's it's good to just, um, jean fred what is your main goal? What, what do you want to achieve? And then we just go, uh, we just ask all of you, what is your main thing that you want to achieve with Week Class Monuments? Um, well, for my secret uh, stories about making Wikimedia Commons hugely popular, but I'm not sure if uh, even Week Class Monuments can help that. Uh, well, documenting every single monument that's ever been built in France. That sounds like a good plan. Very good. Yeah, same, same here. Um, every monument in Austria should be have a picture in, on, on Wiki. Nice views of Austria. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, if, sorry if, you can, if you can wait for the microphone, then we can also tape you. Uh, for me, it's uh, also make the people sensible for our cultural heritage. So um, people walk through uh, their hometown maybe and they do not know what is protected, what is non-protected, what is an important important building or not. So I think oh, this is also a big uh, point for our uh, National Monument Office to make people sensible for their cultural heritage. Yeah, the same here. We want to make the, the monuments known to the, to the people. For me to more f uh, more free content on the, the comments, uh, better n knowledge about our cultural heritage and improve uh, uh, the Wikipedia so we have more info about our cultural heritage. Okay, thank you. So, is that some is that an answer you, that helps you? Good thing. Okay, thank you. Hey, it's me again, Wins from the Hungarian Wikipedia. And uh, right. And um, actually, my question is that uh, whether you locally have ever thought about um, maybe organizing a tour or walk, uh, maybe to the places where you say there are no uh, pictures taken from, to those places or either to, to, to somewhere around the city where you live. Um, I, maybe I can answer this question. So I participated last year in 
the project Wik Wikilove's Monument Mittelhessen, so it's a region in Germany. It was organized by an uh, author from Germany and uh, people from Germany and Austria met there and drove around with, with cars to uh, take pictures. So we also plan to do this in Austria this year, but on a more lower organized level, so just some people, they know each other to, uh, for a weekend or so. Uh, especially in this red regions when you remember the map, so to take their photos. Uh, two years ago we did uh, Wiki Takes Harlem. Harlem is my, uh, my hometown and we didn't have a lot of images. So we uh, went out to take uh, photos of all the historic buildings in one afternoon. I think we took over a thousand images. Last year we did the same in uh, Amsterdam. You have the open monuments days, uh, the European Heritage Days, and then a lot of old buildings are open. We used that day uh, to, to go out into the city, and uh, I think we had about 20 people all going out in different groups. We printed lists of buildings we still needed photos of, and they took thousands of photos. Uh, before that, Amsterdam had still a lot of white spots, and then suddenly the whole center was covered with, uh, with photos. Uh, it's really nice to organize uh, a wiki takes your, your city. I would encourage people to do that. It's not a lot of work. You just have to pick a date uh, and meet up somewhere, uh, prepare some lists, and people just go out with their cameras. It's a really fun thing to do. You end up with uh, having a drink somewhere, maybe going out for food, and. It's a small activity, but really fun to do. And just to make a little bit of promotion, the next session in this room will, all be, will be all about photo events, local photo events like that. I may have missed this already, but um, has there been an effort to combine this with QRpedia? Would like to reply to that? Would that make sense? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know. This is happening in September. I don't know if it can happen that quickly, but it seems like it would be ideal situation to have, you know, QR code, et cetera. So. I think that the real reply to that is it's up to every country to do that or not. So um, I think you can, uh, you can expect a different answer from everyone here. Are there more questions? I think there in the corner there was a question. In the meantime, um, one uh, question we also received a lot is how to effectively approach that big institution in your country. What is the best way to make sure that that heritage institution that has all these lists actually wants to participate, wants to help you with your contest? Is there some feedback that you would like to share from your country? How did you get in touch with them? So our list were, were already uh, published when we started the project, so we had a bit luck, uh, uh, big luck. But uh, I know from the Germans they have really, really problems because they have no central uh, um, monument office. The, the monument office are spread in their federal streets, and you have to ask everybody and. Uh, sometimes they say no, we we don't have lists by our own, and so so I think it's for every country um, very different. Uh, one of the things is uh, to just contact them, yeah. just send them an email, call them, and re uh, be persistent. Uh, we have uh, quite some international contacts, so sometimes we might be able to help you. Like the, the organizations you're usually de dealing with are big and old, and they're like Wikipedia is like very new to them. It's still a bit scary. But if they hear it from their people calling and mailing, and they hear it from their colleagues in other countries, they hear about it on conferences. There's a bigger chance that they will actually come through and start helping out. The whole Glam thing, th three years ago, nobody would talk to us. Now they're sending us emails if they could please do something with, with us. We hope to achieve that same kind of thing with the other cultural institutions. Yeah, and I think you, you now have the results of the last year, so there's a, there are experiences, there are something to show them, so maybe it's now easier to get in touch with them. Okay, the gentleman in the corner. Um, Besides the fact that I respect the work you do, I just want to make a shameless plug here. 
for size for the next. Could you talk in the microphone? Is it on? Okay. Um, Sunday Sunday morning here we're hosting Wiki Expedition, which you'll find if you show up on 11 o'clock here. We're having a photo scavenger hunt, which is close to what this is. So I mean, we're gonna have a lot of prizes, fun, and you're gonna be out in the most of the city in the suburbs here, doing photography for every for Wikipedia as a whole. And just the only requirement is bring a camera. That's all I ask. Okay, thank you. Are there more questions over there? So uh, in the meantime, um, one big problem in many countries is how to handle freedom of panorama. <laughs> and I see some people smiling in the room. So um, I know that the person in this panel that has the most problems with that problem is Jean Frédéric. <laughs> could, you, could you share your frustrations with us? Definitely. <laughs> and so explain what it actually is. Okay, so freedom of panorama. Uh, as you may know, copyright is a complicated thing, uh, to say the least. And so basically, uh, uh, everything that has ever been created is, protecting for, is protected by copyright for a limited amount of time, and that includes buildings. So in France, it's 70 years after the death of the author, which is a crazy long, come on. And uh, so if a building, if, uh, well, you Obviously, you've got lots of buildings as which has been built in the 18th century or so, that's okay. And, but if building uh, has been built not that long ago and if the architect is not dead enough for his creation to be in the public domain, then you, we, you can't, we can't have it that on Wikimedia Commons. So this is a real pain in the ass, to say the least. <laughs> and there is no quick and easy solution to that. Uh, the solution we got is we had an old team of checkers uh, which, who did an awesome job just checking every single upload that we have got in France and just checking if it is in the public domain. So sometimes I have to do crazy things just like finding the architect, finding where he died, it, find out if he didn't die during World War II because if he died during World War II as a war hero, actually his copyright gets 20 more euros or something. It's So yes, freedom of panorama is really an issue. Oh yes, and freedom of panorama is in some uh, jurisdictions. There is an exception for copyrights. It says basically that if a building, if uh, a work is on public display, you can do whatever you want. You can photograph it, and it doesn't matter if it's still under copyright or not. So for example, the Germans have it. Well, and in the United States, it's okay for the buildings, but it's not okay for the, uh, the sculptures. So you've got lots of different laws and lots of different. So if your country has a freedom of panorama, you definitely have no excuse to not participate in Wikidos monuments. <laughs> <laughs> so for the, peop for the people who are curious uh, about your country, someone can probably put the link on Twitter to the Commons page explaining freedom of panorama for all countries. It's a huge list with every country, what the status is, and some countries are unclear, and it just says that. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, First to present myself, my name is Vasilka Dimitrovska, I'm coming from Wikimedia Macedonia, from the Republic of Macedonia, and the easiest way to make this project is to find someone like me, <laughs> I'm a professional archaeologist, I come from State University, so I have uh, access to all databases and to all lists of the monuments, uh, we haven't started yet uh, the project uh, Wikilove Monuments in Macedonia, but we have a very big cultural heritage from 6 millennium BC up until 20th century, uh, which is completely unknown for the world. So the list of the monuments is the last problem <laughs> of this contest. The, the biggest problem is how to make the people for these two months to participate in, in this project, because we have only uh, July and August uh, to pronounce or somehow to uh, introduce uh, this project to people. So. Uh, this is just like comment, this is not a uh, question. I would like to uh, ask you all of you for a little help because uh, we don't have projects like Glamp Project and Big Love Monuments in Macedonia yet. We are very small uh, society, very small chapter, also very small as a country, but we have very big heritage. And I, I would just like to somehow to make my uh, admission. Uh, I would like to help to this project, but. Uh, this is the first time I'm introduced with this project on, on this Wikimania uh, conference. 
So um, I will add myself to your list because I know it's a closed list or somehow mailing list, and I will ask for uh, help. So yeah, please. Okay, so first of all, the mailing list is open, so you can just sub, uh, ah, subscribe okay. <laughs> at any time, <laughs> and any of you can. Uh, regarding the the participants, you don't have to worry too much, because uh, we're doing our best, and you should do our best, uh, your best too, as organizer, to keep it easy for for people to participate. So if you make that clear, you'll get lots and lots of participants that uh, you you wouldn't expect. Uh, the biggest, for Romania at least, the biggest um, bunch of participants came from the, um, the site announcement on uh, the Romanian Wikipedia, uh, you know, the, the one on top. So we had about 90% of, um, of all visits to the website from there. And the rest came from social media, from um, from talking to friends, mailing list, and stuff like that. So the the number of people interested will be high. The thing is to make it clear that it's easy, it's fun, and uh, they're really doing it to help s to to a good purpose to help Wikipedia or to help m make the monuments more more better covered on the internet. There was a question from Twitter, I believe. Okay, it's already covered. Then I have one final question because we're running out of time already. And that is, uh, basically I would like to ask all of you, start with Martin, um, what is a weird anecdote you have? What is like the weirdest thing you have encountered organizing Week Lost Monuments? Uh, we started this project a couple of years ago and uh, I remember us walking uh, after General Assembly like, yeah, we should really do the project and we don't have a lot of people, let's just do it. And now we're sitting here go doing it in 30 countries and uh, aiming at half a million pictures. I didn't expect that two, uh, two or three years ago. So after we had the Romanian winner in the European contest, there were, there were lots and lots of interest from the press and from some photo groups. So actually the winner received more prizes from other people than us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he can t tell you more about this if you want. Uh, weird things, I do not know, but um, for me the most impressive thing is that we Within one year, we had two thirds of our monuments documented with photos. So, um, a work that our national monument office never could do. Yeah, no weird things here. Um, it's really just great that the community um, it, it's built around the monuments and, and some such things like that. It's just great. It's much of fun. About something weird, we did have a user in France who uploaded pictures and the colors, you know, the monuments, which is, you know, regular regular stone was pink and the sky was yellow and <laughs> we, don't, we don't really understand why it was, it looks like an impressionist painting or something. Um, so that, that's the funny part. And about uh, a nice anecdote, um, during the contest, uh, we were monitoring you know, social media and blogs and uh, just looking up on Google News, Wikilove's monuments to see if people were talking about it. And I found an amazing blog post about uh, a 13-year-old girl, uh, um, a French girl living in Romania, who heard about the contest and actually participated. So I forwarded the it on the mailing list. And it was so, so very cute. The 13-year-old girl saying, hey, last Sunday after dinner, we went with dad and my brother. We took our bikes because there were three monuments because Wikipedia wanted us to take pictures of monuments. So we took pictures of this monument and we uploaded it on Wikipedia and we hope we get a prize. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> So that seems like a wonderful thing to close off with. Thank you very much for all being here. <laughs> Finally, uh, like, like last year, we're going to try to make a group photo of all the Wikilas Monuments people here. So if everyone who has, is going to organize Wikilas Monuments or has organized Wikilas Monuments or is doing a photo tour or anything to do with Wikilas Monuments, please come up here and let's make a group photo in a few minutes.